Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about 14 ways that you can make your wedding as uniquely you as possible. So we've all been to weddings that felt a little bit cookie cutter and that we thought could have been a little bit more unique to the couple who we know so well and thought, oh, maybe this wedding is not reflective of them and what a shame that is and we don't want that for our own wedding. So yeah, I'm gonna give you 14 ways you can avoid this. Um, so please watch this video till the end and then let me know in the comments below what I missed. What other ways can we use, can we steal to make our weddings as unique as possible? Um, my name is Brittany from WayfaringWeddings.com where I am writing about and um, sharing all of my research on my own upcoming wedding. Um, I'm not a professional wedding planner, I'm just sharing all my ideas because I think it's fun. Um, I'm also making this YouTube channel to do the same thing, so if you like what I'm talking about, if you want to join me in this journey, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks guys, happy wedding planning. Alright, so let's jump right into this for today, how to make your wedding uniquely you. Okay, so the first thing you can do to make your wedding a little bit more unique is to let your, and this is a little strange, but bear with me, is to let your readers choose their readings. I actually got this idea from my partner because we were having a conversation about what our reading should be. He had no idea what that even meant. <laughs> um, and he said, I want any of my friends who are gonna do readings to choose and surprise us with readings that they like, that they think represent our relationship together. And at first I thought that was really crazy to, <laughs> to be surprised by a reading at your wedding. Um, but he convinced me now that I think that is, that could add a really, really cool, meaningful element to, element of surprise to your wedding ceremony. Say, let your readers choose their own readings. Maybe just give them some guidelines like, oh, it has to be under two minutes, three minutes and give them some parameters and then let them run with it. That's a... Uh, that's one way you can make your wedding unique. Okay, the second way you can make your wedding more unique, uh, this is something that I also learned from my partner's, well, from my partner's family, and this is to have a welcome cocktail or a welcome drink when your guests arrive for the ceremony. You know, this will depend if you're having your wedding in a church, you probably can't do this. <laughs> um, but if you're having an outdoor wedding somewhere in the summer and you arrive, you're heading into the ceremony and somebody hands you a uh, cocktail <laughs> or like a flute of champagne or something oh, so awesome immediately this puts all your guests at ease it gives everybody like um, the feeling that they're at a party they can chat with each other and it's just one drink so nobody should be getting too crazy before the ceremony um, and the way this worked at the wedding we went to it was just so cool um, that people had something to do that was fun they had a drink in their hands they were mingling um, instead of like the early arrivers to your wedding ceremony being like bored, um, sitting there waiting for the ceremony to begin. So anyway, that's a cool way to make your wedding unique. I know at least in the US um, and Canada, well, I think we don't usually do this. I had never heard of it before. Maybe it's really common in other cultures to get a welcome drink when you arrive for a ceremony. And I really, really like this. The third way to make your wedding unique is to have somebody who you know and love be your officiant. Uh, all too often I've been to weddings where the officiant seemed to have no idea, seemed to like have no clue who the bride and groom were or the bride and bride or the groom and groom were and it was kind of sad because they would like not, I don't think I've ever seen them get their names wrong, but um, just like say things that are so general, so generic about the couple and I just feel, oh man, it's just so much more special when the officiant knows you and can um, even like come up with some words to talk about at the ceremony that you didn't know about, some surprise, like a surprise, surprise welcome remarks or something. Um, so get someone who you know and who loves you to officiate your wedding, it'll make it so much more unique. Um, so number four is kind of related to number three in that um, you shouldn't have a religious ceremony if you're not religious. <laughs> and I'm not trying to offend anyone at all, but I have been to weddings of friends where um, I know that they're just, they're not very religious people in their everyday life, um, but on their wedding day they choose to have a religious ceremony and I know that it's just not super meaningful to them. I know them, they're just doing this to kind of appease um, their families and it's not them, so it doesn't feel authentic. Of course, if you are religious, have a religious wedding ceremony, um, but I don't think this is the time to like be somebody who you're not on the day of your wedding. Ah, 
I don't know, you might, this might make some people mad. I'm sorry, let me know. Let me know what you think about this. Number five is a really cool idea that I stole from another friend. All of these ideas are stolen from friends and family. <laughs> um, and it's a wine bottle, a wine bottle ceremony that you can do at some point, incorporate into your ceremony wherever, somehow. Um, and essentially, each of your, you and your partner both write a letter to each other um, before the ceremony. So like in advance, you can sit down together, um, write letters to each other separately, and they're really um, some kind of sweet, beautiful letter. And the reason for this is at your ceremony, your officiant takes those two letters that you haven't seen, you haven't seen each other's letters, puts them into a box with a bottle of wine and says something such as, um, I want you guys to, if, if sometime in your life when you're having, a dif when you're having difficulties in your marriage um, and you feel like you might divorce, I want you to open up this box, read the letters that you wrote to each other on this day, and drink this bottle of wine together, um, and uh, try to resolve your problems. If you never get to the point where you're in this situation, just wait 10 years and do this on your 10th anniversary. So that's really cute. You could do something like that. Not to like reference divorce at your wedding, but it's kind of a cute idea. The sixth thing you could do is to have a hand fasting ceremony. This is a really beautiful ceremony that originated, I think, with the Celts. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you see it in series like Outlander and uh, it's in Braveheart, if you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> where essentially the couple joins their hands together and um, has them tied together with a cord or a piece of ribbon and the officiant says some words over your hands and then the, the cord is tied together and you keep that cord in your home as a symbol of your marriage. Um, so it's really, really beautiful. We're planning on doing a hand fasting ceremony at our wedding. Um, so yeah, you could add that to yours as well. I also have an article about how to do a hand fasting ceremony, so I'll link that below. Uh, number seven, another idea on this list to make your wedding more interesting or unique is to not get stuck in have to rules. Um, and what I mean by that is um, like not having, not feeling like you have to stick to um, common gender roles at your wedding. Uh, for example, you could have like, you could, if you're, I'm a woman, I could have a best man. Who cares? Why not? Um, or like instead of flower girls, I've seen people having their grandmothers be flower girls, which is adorable. Or instead of having your father walk you down the aisle, maybe you could have both of your parents um, or your dad and your stepdad or your brother. Like, the, I, or you could walk in together as a couple. Um, instead of getting getting feeling like you're stuck in the traditional kind of way that things have to be done, um, try to get rid of that as much as possible and just do what you want to do, what feels best to you, and it'll make your wedding ceremony feel much more unique and authentic. Number eight is just to write your own vows. A lot of people do this. Writing your own vows during the ceremony can be kind of scary, uh, not during the ceremony. Writing, writing your own vows to this, for the ceremony can be a little bit scary, I know, but it makes it so much more unique. And even if they're really short, they can be short and sweet. You can just speak for 30 seconds each if you want to, uh, but just have, letting everybody attending hear your voice and hearing those words come out of your mouth that are, um, obviously unique and different from the common script that everybody does is really beautiful and an easy way to make your wedding unique. Number nine is to have some element of your ceremony that involves the audience or the crowd. So this can be something like a wishing stone ceremony or a ring blessing ceremony. So essentially you're getting the, the crowd involved in your ceremony somehow. Um, you can do this by passing around your rings and everybody can just like hold your hold your rings during the ceremony and think some good thoughts. Uh, this is gonna depend on how many guests you have, of course. But if you can think of some way to involve the crowd, maybe they say something, um, you let them repeat after the officiant and they're involved somehow, it can make your wedding feel not only fun, really fun for your guests, but also unique and special to who you are. Number 10 is something that I really love and that we're planning on doing, and that's having your guests sit in a circle instead of the traditional rows. Um, there's something really powerful about a circle, about everybody look, being able to look at each other. And if you have a small guest count, I highly recommend that you do this. 
um, really there's some kind of energy that's different than when people sit in, sit in rows. And you can either have it so that you and your partner are in the middle of the circle or that you're kind of at the head of the circle and everybody is, um, that you're part of the circle, if that makes any sense. Uh, that's how we're planning on doing it. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's really cool. There's some ways of doing this on Pinterest, different setups where uh, the seating is in a circle. Number 11 is to have a beer blending or wine blending ceremony. So you might have seen some unity, um, unity, unity, <laughs> unity ceremonies during weddings where people will pour two different um, kinds of liquid together or they'll put two candles together to light one candle or sand ceremonies, putting two different color sands together to form one. And another take on this is beer blending or wine blending. So each part of the couple pours a little bit of beer into one glass and then they drink out of that one glass together to represent their union. So that can be pretty cool. Number 12 is to do a tree planting. If you're having a backyard wedding, think about planting a tree together during your ceremony and then you can watch that tree grow and uh, it's a live, clear representative of your love in your backyard or wherever it is that you had your wedding. This isn't gonna work everywhere, but uh, if you are having your wedding on private property, this would be a really cool thing to incorporate into your ceremony. Number 13 is to make a time capsule. So think about all of the things that are most meaningful to you guys as a couple. You can have uh, like even a beautiful treasure chest or something, some kind of container you and your officiants can sort of briefly explain to the crowd what you're doing at your ceremony and maybe a couple of what the objects are, put them into the time capsule and then bury them during the ceremony. Um, this all has to be really well thought out so that you're not like <laughs> shoveling dirt at your wedding. Um, but if you do it well, having some kind of um, time capsule ceremony can be super, super unique for your wedding. And finally, number 14 on my list is to co incorporate your languages and cultures into your wedding. So if you speak another language or two, or if people in your crowd speak another language, incorporate that into your wedding ceremony. If you're um, from a certain culture, incorporate, do some research, ask your family members about those wedding traditions and incorporate them into your own wedding. Um, if, if these things are meaningful to you, it doesn't matter if they're not popular on Pinterest, incorporate them into your wedding. Uh, these will make your wedding super duper unique and different from all of your friends' cookie cutter weddings. If you like this video, please actually like it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys!